experiences, both in Office 365 as well as uh, Microsoft Outlook. Samia is also experienced in AI-powered vehicle maintenance, where she holds a patent for her master's thesis. And today, she will be talking about how to create hooking experiences using reinforcement learning and responsible artificial intelligence. Samia, we're really glad to have you. And uh, the floor is all yours. Please go ahead. Hey, hello, everyone. Welcome. So glad to be here with you all. So let me start by sharing my screen and let me know if you can see it. Let's test that out. Uh, just a second. Hope everyone's been having a great time so far, enjoying all the talks. So let me know when um, you can see it. Which view is it? Now we can, yes. We can see. Uh, which view are you seeing? Are you seeing the right view? Presenter's view. Oh, okay. We're seeing the whole screen, yeah. Let's see. Um, okay, let's try it this way. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, we are going to continue on what we talked about from the panel discussion, lots of discussions about personalization and responsible AI. So I'll continue on that. But before I continue, can you just confirm if the screen is all okay? Yes, yeah, looks good. wonderful. Okay, perfect. So yeah, let's get started. We are short on time. So we are living in an era of information overload. There is lots more information that we are able to handle. So on one side, we have lots more data, lots more to keep up with. And on the other side, our attention spans have decreased. So how do we keep up with the two opposing things we want to have? How do we create experiences that users really love in this kind of uh, world? So this is where personalization comes into play. If you have, and you have widely experienced it everywhere. For example, the Windows home screen, did you know that the image they show you is based on things that you are more likely to enjoy? Or um, Netflix, you know it well, they show you the movies, the content that you are likely to enjoy the most or Spotify, the music that's personalized for you. And even in Xbox, uh, the games that show up, that is content that as a user, you enjoy the most because we need to create apps that are able to tell the user that we really understand you and surface the content from all the noise that is most relevant for the user. And because it's in that case, it's a win-win for both users and the product app uh, owners as well, because you are getting the max user engagement. For example, did you know that in Netflix, besides uh, doing the personalized recommendations of movies, even the images, the thumbnails that they show you, they are personalized to you. For example, if a person likes action movies, they will show you a scene from the movie where there's some fighting going on. But if you are someone, let's say, who likes more comedy or um, a romantic movies, then they'll show you a couple scene or some, some other snip from the movie, because in that way, they're maximizing your being attracted to that content, because that, that level of personalization is sending the message that, hey, we really understand you. Uh, uh, and that in turn get the users hooked to the apps for good or the bad. We'll come to that later on. So now how do we go about creating such personalized experiences since it's so, so important in today's world and very relevant? This is where the magic of AI comes into play and more specifically, a type of AI called reinforcement learning. Essentially in reinforcement learning, the way it's different from traditional machine learning is in traditional uh, machine learning, we have a set of data set. We know uh, we have a data set, for example, emails and we know which are spam, which are not spam or cats and dog pictures. And we have the labels, hey, this is a cat, this is a dog and so on. While in reinforcement learning, we don't start with a labeled data set. This is more like a teaching exercise where 
we are teaching our system to learn to provide us the right kind of suggestions. So it, there's, we could think of as an agent and that has an environment. The agent observes the environment. We have a set policy. We'll come to the policy in a bit. And then based on the policy and the environment, it takes an action, whether it's recommended uh, a movie or uh, any other action in case of a robot, it may, needs to take the next action or playing a game, the next move. So it takes the action. Based on the action, it gets a reward or a penalty. So if, it, if it's a reward, it knows, hey, I did the, the action I took was great. So it learns from that, that good to go. But if it did a, a, a wrong step, that it recommended something that wasn't great, the user never clicked, or uh, playing a game, it was a wrong move, then it, that's a punishment. So by this process of rewards and punishment, it learns to update its policy so that the next suggestions become better and better. And it uh, does this in an iteration. So this is an iterated loop. Uh, a great example is uh, the game of Go, where uh, AI learned to play and master and become better, right? Even chess, where AI was doing better than the human players. How, how did that happen? By playing the same game millions and millions of times until it knows what is the next great move. Uh, so this is where we learn to make suggestions. So there's says reinforcement learning. Now to add more personalization into it, we bring in a, a concept into RL called multi-armed contextual bandit. So let's, it's a heavy term, so let's break it down into components and understand what all of uh, this means. So um, multi-armed bandits. So bandits, this term derived from the problem of uh, uh, if you've seen in casinos, there are all these slot machines. And say you have a limited amount of money and you want to get the maximum rewards. So which machines should you try out? If you have 10 machines, should you go and spend money on each of them? Or say if you have found one or a great machine, you should just keep playing on that and spend all your money there. So that's the multi um, bandit, bandit, that's where it comes from, from the problem of playing with slot machines. The contextual part comes in because besides the machine, the slot machines where we need to play, we have a limited amount of money and these machines and we need to identify which is the best one, we need to take into account the context as well. So this is where the a contextual part comes in compared to a traditional multi-arm bandits. So what we are saying is that when pulling the slot, uh, uh, playing with the slot machine, if the it's day or let's say it's night, depending on the context of the person playing, the rewards will be different. So if you can think of, for example, the messages that you want to display to the users, the users are your limited amount of money and you have 10 messages, which message should you display? And that might vary based on uh, the time of the day or so on. For example, um, if it's a, a work hour on Spotify, you might want to listen to say some productivity music, or if it's a weekend, you might want to listen to different kind of uh, music with similar movies or any other, kind of things, for example, shopping, wherever you want to do personalization, context is important. So this is where the contextual part needs to be taken into account as well. We'll look uh, into also how this works uh, very soon. So, so there's a multi-arm bandit where we need to make the choice and take the context into account by using this iterative process of learning from mistakes, making the suggestions and updating the policy to make the better suggestion next time and learning from the wrong recommendations. This is, uh, you might think if we do something similar in A-B testing where you show a certain variant to a user base, you see how they're performing, for example, on a website, a variant A or B. So this is different as in with A-B testing, what we say at the end, if 70% of the users or the majority likes a variant A, we'll show that variant to everyone. 
in that case, we are kind of misunderstanding the rest of the users because with uh, with RL and multi-arm bandit, what we are saying that we show to each user what they prefer and not what works for the majority. And also uh, A-B testing, it takes some time to get to uh, statistical significance. Now, a dilemma that comes in to all the RL problems is explore versus exploit. What does it mean? So when we are providing recommendations, should we, if we have identified, let's say that the user likes action movies, should we keep on showing them always action movies? So exploiting the information we have collected so far, or should we explore and try to show them something new once in a while? So because if we don't expose you to something new, you will not discover anything more, right? So this is also happens in your feeds, on your Instagram feed. If you click a lot um, on say uh, sports content, you'll get to say lots more sports news. But if they show you that's all 100% of your feed, you never discover anything more. So that there is a trade off there that's taken into account. One way to do this is, for example, um, uh, by a policy, epsilon greedy policy, where we set a threshold that if, uh, if a, let's say a random number is less than the threshold, we will show, we will try to explore, show you something new. Otherwise we'll exploit. So think of it also when you are going, for example, out for to a restaurant to eat, you have a limited amount of money. Your budget is not uh, infinity. So should you try new restaurants? And if you go to a new one, the food might be crappy, but if you don't go to any new restaurant, you'll never discover anything there, right? So how do you do that? So that's where we are saying that you, let's say, throw a dice. If the dice is below a certain, let's say, if you get a one, you try something new, anything about one, you will keep on trying what you have discovered that works great. Now, setting this threshold can be problematic because we need to identify what is the right threshold. So in the, uh, there is another type of algorithm called Thompson sampling that tells us that when the algorithm isn't sure about, um, isn't uh, with high probability that the suggested recommendation is great for the user, then it goes for explore. So when in doubt, try something new. Now, this might be sounding all very like, you know, difficult to implement and like, okay, this sounds great, but how do I actually do it? How do I add personalization into my apps or my experiences? This is where the power of democratization of AI comes into play because the value creation of AI is huge. So it cannot be something that only the big tech companies who have uh, the best of talent resources in terms of money, computational powers and times and everything. It shouldn't just belong to them to be able to implement these experiences. We need more and more people to be able to utilize all the goodness that AI brings. This is why, uh, uh, for example, Microsoft, Google, and all the big tech companies with the uh, cloud providers provide you the solutions where, for example, you don't need to know how to implement all the things that we talked about earlier. How do you implement RL in your service? How do you add all the policies that we talked about? How do you tweak them? For example, I'll talk about, since I work at Microsoft from uh, Microsoft Service, Azure personalize it, personalize the service. You can Google it um, and you'll find also, or Bing it, uh, you'll find documentation Azure personalize the service. I'll go uh, in some details as well. So what essentially you need to do is they are telling you that we will do all the algorithm parts for you. We'll handle it. We'll find what is the right thresholds. What as a user, let's say you you're developing an app where you need to add the personalized experiences, it's, it's shopping to provide the recommendations, or uh, it's a new site, you need to provide the news recommendations. So you send a request and your request contains information about the user and the content that you want to uh, sort or recommend. And then all the algorithm part, the 
things that I talked about, the contextual bandit uh, and updating the policies and making sure it's right, it happens behind the scenes. And you get back a decision. Decision is, let's say, rank news items, the top news item, whatever you, uh, your problem is. And then based on the actions, you just tell the third is the outcome, because then, as we talked about, the system learns from mistakes and rewards. So we need to tell back the algorithm to the service that if what was recommended was good or not, so that it can update its policy. For example, um, let's say you want to recommend play, watch, or uh, join by, uh, action. So, and you have some user context and these actions you send back to this API that will rank for you. It provides a recommendation. Did the user click on the provided recommendation or not? So you send back that feedback so that the policy can be updated on its own. So based on the reward, it will know, yeah, I did it right, but oh no, I did a mistake. So that's a punishment for the system. So you can use all of this without knowing all the math and having to worry about implementing and thinking that you need to do a PhD first before you can add AI into your scenarios. The major component of the personalized service are you need, what you need to know if you want to utilize such a service in a democratized way is one, the features. Features means that think the properties of the things that you are learning about. For example, when recommending, recommending movies, the features are we know the type of movies, action, comedy, romantic, who are the actors in it, the duration, and so on. Those are the features. And then um, we have also like feature, uh, feature uh, the actions that we want to recommend. Is it, for example, do we want to do ranking of the movies or do we want to suggest actions? What is that we are asking the system to learn to provide the suggestion? Are we playing a game where we need to suggest the next action? The third is context is important in personalization. So for example, the location of the user, the profile, and all the information that can tell you, is it a weekend or is it a weekday and so on. And then the fourth is the reward. The reward tells us so that the reward is did the user click, how long did they watch it for and so on. Um, now we are short on time, so I'll run very quickly through it. So. Do look at the Azure Personalizer service. You'll find lots more detail on the uh, uh, on the documentation. If you are using, for example, uh, Google Cloud as well, you should be able to find similar um, services there as well. So yeah, I'll jump over all of this since we started late. So sorry about that. So to recap. What you need, what's important for you is to identify your use case. So first understand your problem well. Where do you want to apply personalization? Understand the features you're dealing with that can help because of course AI is not magic. It's some math running behind and there is a set of algorithms. So, and so you need to be aware of like what features to use and what are the actions. And also you need to identify the reward functions. So that's all you need to do. Once you have that, everything else will be taken care of. So you can try Azure Cognitive Services Personalizer to read more on the topic. Now, last but not the least, what I want to share is, um, oh, by the way, before I move on, I want to tell you that what I just shared, this personalizer service, this is used within Microsoft as well. It was used to lift 40% lifting user engagement with Xbox. So it's used uh, all in Xbox and also the uh, initially I showed the Windows home screen images there as well. So it's whatever is being used internally, you can use it as well. So it's the same algorithms. It was uh, these things are developed by Microsoft Research and then we have exposed it for the public so that everyone can use it. Yeah, now last but not the least, once you have all this power of getting the users hooked, right? That can be detrimental as we have learned over there's all this debate over social media usage and uh, getting people to live on social media and getting them there, it's not really great as well. And there are other aspects as well. So when you are having this power of AI, with power comes responsibility, so it's essential that you take into account the 
components of responsible AI. So let's look at some of them. So the values you must respect, accountability. For example, you need to make sure what are the rewards that you're taking into account. So are you rewarding, let's say, some hate actions? Uh, if you are showing some hate content is being rewarded, what is your reward function? Is it detrimental? Or um, so you need to be accountable, which are the features you're using? How do you develop? So the use case is that as a scenario owner, you need to make sure that it's something that is not damaging for the society and how you are coming up with those reward functions to avoid, to respect a certain set of values. Transparency is another important one because as you've seen, um, AI people tend to trust more when they know why that decision. This is why on Netflix, for example, they when they provide you recommendations, they tell you this is based on your history, this is based on your likes and so on. That, that, that information, that one-liner creates the trust with the user because you are telling why you are showing something. And also transparency comes in, you need to tell the users which data you are using as well. Um, so yeah, transparency creates trust. So it's good for the app as well, besides the AI principles as well, because it creates a trust between AI and users. Fairness of the system that when you are using that, so you need to make sure that you are not doing personalization that is biased towards, let's say, race or gender. Say if it's a girl playing a game or watching a movie, you recommend always, uh, you never recommend action games because you have the bias or sports games or movies because you think, oh, it's a girl, she'll, she'll never watch it. But you take into account the user's context and or even worse is racial biases, let's say if it's an application news or um, giving loans or so on, you don't introduce any biases because um, uh, of, yeah, bias on itself, it's a different topic, so I'll not go there. But yeah, so please make sure you are being fair towards everyone. And then reliability and safety that the content that you're dealing with, that you make sure that uh, it's safe for the users. You are not uh, promoting, let's say, hate content, uh, that promoting violence uh, or resulting in chaos. Security and privacy is a huge one. And if you don't respect it, for example, in Europe, you can get millions and millions um, of dollars of fines. It's also for the system should be secure. The data is secure, is preserved. And you tell the user the data that you're storing and using to making those decisions. And last but not the least, we need to be inclusive of everyone when designing those experiences. For example, uh, what I love is a personal example is the adaptive controller of Xbox. That, that is huge because it's such a beautiful example because what it tells is that when everybody plays, we all win. And I'm sure you can incorporate this mindset in whatever applications that you want to create personalization with because yeah we want everyone to win so yeah thank you so much i hope you learned something insightful today so yeah to connect with me you can find me on uh, the social media channels or also my ai blog with that said thank you so much for listening in and i hope you have a great rest of the conference Thank you so much, Samia. Thank you so, so much. Uh, this is truly an amazing session. I uh, personally, again, enjoyed it a lot. Um, and I'm a huge fan of your YouTube channel as well. So um, I would suggest everyone here to go uh, check out her videos. They're amazing. Um, and thank you again for uh, taking out the time and, you know, kind of uh, talking about something that wouldn't necessarily people would think of connecting, you know, reinforcement learning um, and like creating good experiences with that and also being responsible while you're at it. So I think that combination was really unique and we thank you for contributing your insights uh, to this particular summit. Yeah, thank you for having me with you. Awesome.